what's going on folks thanks for watching this episode i'm going to go over the delve gear and the gear in combination of all three for eshka zeta ruan and Ryzenjima. so here we go delve is a battle system that came out with the seekers of adelin expansion it was at the time the most difficult battle system and had some of the best rewards that is no longer the case it is because of this that I will only spend a short time on this section, as you are more likely to get the gear from the Gabi box than this event itself, since it isn't done very often anymore. So you basically get an entry item and go in with 3 plus people, as 3 to 18. Fight your way through a cave and NMs of varying mechanics to an end boss. Each delve will have an end boss corresponding to the Wildskeeper Reeve NM of the zone which you entered. The NM and the boss will give you gear and Moea Plasm, that is the currency used for more gear. Since the drops from the NMs can vary and you, you would usually go in with a big group, you are less likely to get the gear you wanted. So you could use this gear currency to buy the specific gear you wanted. That was cool, but now that the gear is outdated and the cost is still high, Delve has gone by the wayside. Here is an example of one of the zone's rewards. You have to kill NMs and ultimately the boss to be able to access the full list of items. It should be noted, however, that Delve is basically a required part of the quest to get to Geo or run Mythic weapons, requiring 2.5 million Moea Plasm, among many other items. Now let's move on to Eshka and Ryzenjima stuff. Eshka Zeta, Eshka Ruan, and Ryzenjima gear I am going to lump together because much of the gear received from all of them could be considered part of an overall greater system called Gaius Fate? Fete? Fete? I guess I just think of it as Gaius Fate. Gaius Fate is a tiered NM system that requires pop items received from the entry NPC of each of the zones. For example, Wepwawet is a tier 1 NM in Eshkazita that requires a Wepwawet's tooth key item to pop. You get this key item from Affy, the entry NPC, in exchange for one of the items you see listed here. The party leader must trade this KI and as long as the, all the members have their own KI called a Tribulens, purchased with Eshka currency called Silt, then the NM pops. Eshka Zeta rewards and gear breakdown. Tier 1 gives augmentable armor sets, a shite, despair, a naga, rawhide, pursuers, cycloth, and vanya. These are augmentable with nolan and esha elixir, as and get bumped up to tier B on my chart once augmented. Tier 2 NMs uh, drop augmentable weapons. Tier 3 NMs are harder NMs, but require more people, but the gear starts at tier B and they are not augmentable. Eshka Ruan Gear Rewards Breakdown Warders are updated versions of Jailers, the CNMs in COP, that drop miscellaneous gear pieces but notably upgraded combat skill accessories that can be synergized into one combined combat and magic skill accessory. Tier 1 NMs have many miscellaneous accessories and hands and feet abjurations. And if you saw episode 3 of this series about abjuration gear, then you'll. This is the explanation of how to get them from NMs. Uh, in that episode, I also explained you can get them from domain evasion. In fact, it might be a preferable way if you are like me and like to play solo or you're not on at consistent times every day. Tier 2 NMs drop augmentable weapons and head and leg abjurations, see above. Tier 3 drop miscellaneous gear and accessories and the body abjurations for the sets of the abjurations. The Archangels uh, drop Deacon variations of the AA weapons, not to be confused with the Anahira variations and accessories. The Anahira variations are from the high tier mission battles to be discussed next episode. Heavenly Beasts, which are new variations of Sky Gods, they drop upgraded Sky Gear and accessories. And now on to the more important part of this episode, the Ryzenjima Gear Rewards Breakdown. Tier 1 NMs drop the feet, hands, and legs, and head actually, I think they drop all but the body pieces, for the Koranic, Herculean, Merlinic, and Odyssean, and Valoris gear sets. These are also obtainable through Domain Invasion and upgraded with Oseam, with Fern, Pellucid, and Taupe Stones. 
Tier 2 NMs drop augmentable weapons and accessories, and Tier 3 NMs drop the chess pieces of the Tier 1 augment sets. These Tier 1 sets from Tier 1 and Tier 3 NMs and Domain Invasion points are potentially S-tier gear, S gear, but getting these S-tier augments are very rare. The Fern, Pellucid, and Tope augments system is quite random and the augments vary greatly. See bgwiki.com for an explanation on which augment items to use for your desired potential outcome. It should be noted, however, there is another augment item that can be used. Dark Matter is very expensive but gives this gear the possibility to creep beyond the normal augment stat range of Fern, Pellucid, and Tope. Dark Matter can even cause an augment that would not normally appear on that piece at all, for example, Treasure Hunter and Refresh. Keep your eye on the current event campaigns going on in the game as well. If Dark Matter Arcane Glyphics is currently running, you can get these Dark Matter Augments for free 6 or 12 times per day. 12 times if it is the Dark Matter Arcane Glyphics Plus event. Here's an example of the Rising Jima Augment table for Herculean Armor. Again, see BG Wiki for an explanation on how to somewhat predict certain augments or what to use to increase your chances of getting a particular one. One last note, if you are like me and usually play solo or at least on, not on a consistent time every day, I would recommend getting this tier 1, tier 3 Rice and Jima gear from the Domain Invasion points. You can get 100 points per real life day. These gear pieces cost 800 including the body pieces. This is extra beneficial for me because I have 12 mules all leveled to 99 and can do domain invasion with each of them for 100 per day for each. And then once they have reached 800 points, get, a, get and send this gear to another character on my account. If I did domain invasion on all characters in 8 days, I could have 2 full sets of this gear plus 2 pieces. Not to mention getting the gobby box, login points, a montrove, more age slots to sell gear and items, and more special free items that sometimes show up in inventory, etc. But that's all a story for another day. Also, check out another one of my videos that's under my Final Fantasy Miscellaneous playlist for an um, explanation on a Montrove. Alright, that should do it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.